Welcome back guys. In this training, we're gonna quickly cover how to track cookies and set cookies automatically so that we have populated forms. So that once I've filled out this form, it pulls my information back in again and again for each form. We're working specifically within WP Fluent Forms. I really like this platform. It's pretty powerful. Uh, this is going to be useful for anyone who's going to fill out more than one form. So if you're emulating a funnel, creating a funnel, or creating a multi-form step process, we want to make sure that once the information is filled out, it carries it over to the next form. So you can see I fill out this information. I'm going to make it so it takes me to a second step. This could be a funnel or just a second page. When they fill out the second information, there's no populated information. So we're going to make this information automatically get populated. Let's get into it. The first step is to find your form. So my first form in this case is a get a quote form. I already copied some code here. This is what we're going to use. I've identified the names of my input fields. So we use the various input fields and we're going to add this JavaScript code to my form itself. It's important to make sure that you have administrative names and labels on your fields themselves, right? So I've got my form here and it has an element label so that I know what it's gonna be called. It's gonna be called email, right? That's really important. So I name all of the fields so that I can call them. And then let's get into integrations and settings. On our thank you message for this form, we're going to add JavaScript. So it's the ba basic thank you message that whatever you wanna show the person, hey, thanks for submitting your free quote request. We will get in touch with you shortly. Okay, so that's what's going to be shown. And then I've already added some JavaScript. So I usually add a JavaScript. It adds this P tag around here. So we could just ignore that. First, I add a JavaScript because I add this on all my forms so that I can have a G tag event so it can track an event which I can turn into a conversion. So this is how I track my conversions rather than doing it on the thank you page. That way, if I want to use that thank you page for a second step, it doesn't uh, falsify my conversions. So I add my G tag conversion. That's just an additional step. Then we add the code that's gonna track the cookies. So if you need to know what the name of your form is, you can go into the visual side of the editor, just go to the end of the form, and then add a short code, and you can find out what the input value of that field is that you're trying to capture, whether it's your email or your phone. So take note of those, you can copy those and add those to the JavaScript that we're gonna add here. So it's a super simple script. I like to put uh, comments, obviously, set the cookies for future form use. And then here it goes, script open tag, script close tag, document.cookies equals, and then we name whatever we want to name this cookie. If you want to name it something like form dash first name, that's even more appropriate probably. That way you know you're not overwriting with another cookie. So name your cookie, how you're going to save it, and then use that short code that was given here for each and every field. So I'm saving my first name, saving my last name, saving my email, saving my phone number. Okay? So... At that, go back to visual. These will show up here like this, but they won't actually show up on the on the front page. So that's my tracking code, and this is my cookie tracking code. And I'm going to hit save. So let's look at it on the front end. So I've already done it to this initial form, and since I filled it out once, it's now tracking the code as well as passing that code in to the next form. What I haven't done is I haven't done it on my secondary form, which is on this secondary page. So after they fill out a form, hey, if you're interested, how about you also check out this other service that we provide and I asked them to fill out this secondary form. I want the information to get populated here. This is how we do it. We go find that form. We're going to set default values. So with this type of, of field, we just need to find default value on these name fields where it's split. It's right here in default. So we set the cookie, okay? So I've noted already on my notepad the names of these cookies, right? Here they are. First name is first underscore name. So we're going to set cookie value, set cookie value. And then we say what it is. This is first name, cookie value dot first name. Now we're going to do the same thing for my next form, which is a default cookie value. Then we're going to change this to last name. Oh, it's an underscore, not a minus. We're going to go down to the next field that I want to auto populate, which would be the phone number, default value. Again, cookie. You can also do this with the get variable if it's the very next screen. I think cookies are more powerful because it's going to save it across the whole entire session for that user. So that's the phone. And then we're going to do the same thing here with the email. 
and default values on this, in this case is in here, it's hiding within the advanced options. So we go to advanced options, default value. So it's either in the default options or it's in advanced options. Just continue looking until you find default value, set cookie, and this one is email. Okay, fantastic. So I'm ready to save that. It's gonna have the default values of those fields there, which is great. What I can do as well is if somebody fills out this form and I want to save the values, I can add that save of the values to that form as well. So again, on the front end, we just wanna make sure we know what the values are, are. So what is first name? What is last name? What is the phone? And what is the short code for email? Well, they're all the same as my initial first underscore name, last underscore name, phone, and email. So I can use the same code that I used prior. So I take my code and I write my code in here. And again, it always adds this extra open and close P tag around the code, which is a little bit annoying, but that's okay. We'll survive, right? It puts a P tag around anything anyway. So I'm just gonna put it inside my P tag. So there it is, script, document, save, make it first name, make it last name, make it email, make it phone. You wanna make sure this is the same on all of these forms, that way, the cookie name is the same so that on any form where you want to call the first name or last name, it will auto-populate that. So this way, if they fill out this form before they fill out the free quote form, I can populate this onto any further forms, either in my funnel or in my website. This is particularly useful in funnels where you're going to have a form on the first page and then you're going to go to a thank you page and then you might ask them to go to a third page with another form. It'll pull that information onto that final form. Here we go. Just check it out in visual real quick. Still looks good and I'm going to hit save. I'm going to refresh this page and it should be pulling in this information. There it is. It pulled in my first name cookie, last name cookie, phone number cookie, and email. So there you have it. That is how you save user inputs as a cookie, which is a session variable that will then carry out for anywhere on the session. So now if I'm opening this form, it'll carry it onto that form. If I go down to this form, it'll carry it onto that form. It doesn't matter if I refresh the page, it'll still hold it. I can go to another page and come back to this page and it'll still hold it. Cookie session variable tracking added to forms. I hope that was helpful. Try to keep it short and brief. As always, have a great day. And if you like this type of content, please comment and subscribe and like us and hit the little bell notification icon. And then also, if you do comment, you can ask me specific questions that you have. And if I haven't already found out the solution to that, I will find out the solution and I'll post a video on how to solve that niche problem because that's what we do here. We like to solve problems. And any problem I solve for you is probably a problem my team's going to encounter. So it's going to help them as well. 